After a flawless round, Rihanna and Logan are still in the running for their third junior medal. Nico, ranked number eight in the nation, is one of their biggest threats. But with just 20 minutes until he rides, he's not quite ready. Nico, get on that horse. Come on, let's go. Wake up. Shouldn't stay out so late, driving around in circles. <laughs> Nico! I don't want it. It's always something with her. Now that he's awake, Nico will be riding a horse named 007. 007 is a proven champion and carried another rider to victory at the McClay Medal two years ago. 007 is a bit fresh, but we're going to leave him that way, so he's forward. So hopefully that'll turn out well. But who knows? Anything can happen. To have a chance at the medal and a chance at beating Brian and Logan, Nico has to ride a perfect course. Trainer Frank Madden also helps coach Nico. But Nico is about to pull a bizarre move that may kill his chances of moving on to the next round. Boy. Nico is supposed to circle once and then jump the first fence, but instead, Nico circles twice. The rest of Nico's round is solid, but Frank is furious about the two circles. He had a nice round, but his entrance to the first, they might have called that a refusal. I don't know. With competition this stiff, anything out of the ordinary can count against you. Now it's up to the judges to decide whether Nico's second circle counts as a refusal to jump. Yeah. You, I don't know what they're going to do about the first jump. Tell it. They're going to think you can start. It's like a refusal. What do you mean? Oh, I thought you wanted us to circle out the canner. You went in towards the first jump, then you went around the fan, <coughs> then you picked up your canner, and then circled another time. Well, I, yeah, I, I didn't even consider that as a... That's his 10%. He's got to add to screw things up. I don't know. It was, it was stupid. Trainer Andre Dignelli is one of the best in the business, but his riders are having trouble. And for him, the Harrisburg medal is slipping away. The ring is filled with flowers and it's a little different, maybe atmosphere. Um, I don't know. Andre is willing to do whatever it takes to change his luck. A little power suit, maybe bring us a little success. But it doesn't seem to be working. Spooky. We need the good riding kids to have horses that are trying to win. And so far, we haven't had both. It's now 4.50 in the afternoon. The moment of truth has come for the long shots, Lindsay and her horse LV. Winning the McLean medal has been Lindsay's dream for years. But this is her last chance to qualify for the final. She and LV must place in the top 10, or their McClay dreams are over. It was really stressful knowing that Harrisburg was my last opportunity to make it to the McClay finals. And going up against so many good riders, you have to be perfect. So I was pretty stressed, especially since I went 260th, which gave me a lot of time to think about everything, <laughs> which was kind of scary. Lindsay has to face her fears right in front of the best riders and trainers in the country. Frank doesn't know Lindsay, but he's taking notice of her now. Oh, this yeah, is that girl from Virginia. Not anymore. From Maryland. I've, I've never seen her go. They've been talking a lot about her. What, what, what was that entrance? Before she even takes the first jump, LV spooks trotting past a fence with flowers. Lindsay keeps going and knocks a rail down on the eighth jump and then another on the 11th jump. Today is not a day you want to have a rail down out there. We're good. Okay. Lindsay's round was a disappointment. With so many mistakes, there's no way she'll place in the top 10. And that means there's no way she'll make it to the McClay. For Lindsay and LV, it's really over now. Everything that 
we've worked on over the years. It came together today, but not good enough. That, that's also a hard part of it. A little frozen from the and I wish that it could have gone a little bit better, but you know, just him. I mean, he's just, he's an incredible horse, and I absolutely love him. <laughs> first phase of the Harrisburg Medal is coming to an end. The course has tested the medal of every horse and rider and every trainer. The show has been going for more than 12 hours and everyone is exhausted. Oh my god, my back. I'm very tired. He's the most exhausted. He's got the biggest bags under his eyes. Two hundred and seventy-nine riders competed in round one, but only twenty-five will advance to round two. For the riders at Beacon Hill, it all comes down to who made the cut. Waiting to see if we get called back. We've got Chelsea on Anatello. Brian is on Logan. Sloan's on Sino. We've got Maria over here on Amigo. And Nico is also on 007. Trainer Frank Madden and his wife, Stacia, are about to triumph. And then 282, 153, 68, Brian? 33, Brian? and 214. Wow. Three. That's amazing. Not every trainer had such a great day. Beacon Hill's rival barn, Heritage Farm, had an uncharacteristically bad showing. Trainer Andre Dignelli didn't get a single horse and rider in the top 25. At these events, you want to feel like you give it your best shot and you do everything you humanly can do, and um, you hope it all works. You know, you'd love for it to come together in these moments, and sometimes it does, and sometimes it doesn't. Next time. Oh, well, <laughs> next time, right. <laughs> but Andre is keeping his eye on the biggest prize of all, the McClay Medal. He and his girls head home to regroup and prepare for next week's showdown in Syracuse. But for Frank, things are just getting started. Five of his riders are in the top 25, an amazing feat for any trainer. Luckily for Nico, his double circle didn't knock him out. He advances to the second round in 22nd place, while Chelsea pulls a great comeback in 12th place. Better yet, Brianna and Logan are currently in second place, behind Sloan. Um, it would be so cool to win um, all four equitation finals, but in order to do that, Logan and I would first have to win the Harrisburg medal final. Unfortunately, in order to do that, um, I'd have to beat out my best friend Sloan, which is really tough, but I guess that's just the way the sport goes, so. Can Brian beat her best friend to take home the medal? We're going to jump a few little jumps now. Frank doesn't want to lose momentum. Okay. Let's keep it up, okay? Keep it up. Okay, wait. It's 6.30, and the second phase is about to begin. This round is designed to give the judges another look at the horses and riders to separate the good from the truly outstanding. Only the top five from this round will advance to the next level, where they will ride off against each other. Everyone wants to get in the top five. So the strategy is just keep the kids calm, have the horses calm, feeling good, relaxed, and seize the moment. That's the only thing I can keep thinking. You know, just seize this moment. But it's like we've reached the summit. Let's get like ten feet to go. Let's finish the climb. I, I just want to win the damn thing. Maria and Amigo are up first. They put in an excellent round earlier to get here. Now, they have to be even better 
to make it to the final five. But for Maria, the ride will be bittersweet. Amigo has been sold and is going to a new home. My last show with Amigo was really sad. I really, really enjoyed working with him. It was the last time I was going to get to see him, so saying goodbye to him was really hard because we had formed such a strong relationship and such a strong bond, and I really, really miss him. In a fitting tribute to their last show together, Maria and Amigo are nearly perfect. Meanwhile, Frank's youngest student, Chelsea, is in the middle of an amazing comeback. Not only did she make it to the top 25, she and Anatello are currently in 12th place. After that awful day at USEF finals, when Frank yelled at me, the only thing I wanted to do was redeem myself. And I was thrilled when I made it to the top 25. But can Chelsea handle the pressure? One seven seven, the number four, Chelsea Moss from Medford, New Jersey. Incredibly, Chelsea keeps her composure and guides Anatello in a nearly perfect round. Up next are Frank's superstars, Brian and Sloan. Got a good feeling about it, guys. Sloan launches every jump in the ideal spot, and her signals to her horse are invisible. It's a beautiful round. But now, it's the moment everyone has been waiting for. Brian and Logan will have to be nearly flawless in order to make it to the final five. Their shot at history is on the line. First half of our main two in our final group is the entry number 33 on horse. 33 is Brianne Dutal from New York City. Once again, Brianne and Logan are perfect. Frank's amazing lucky streak continues. That was perfect. But will the judges agree? Everyone is on pins and needles as they wait for the final five to be announced. Beacon Hill has three riders in the top five. Brian, Sloan, and Maria. Brian's chance at the record books is still within reach. But for Lindsay, a heartbreaking decision lies ahead. Riding is an expensive sport, and she's had to face a painful choice about her future in equitation. Harrisburg was my last chance to advance to the McClay finals, but unfortunately that didn't happen for LV and I. But um, I've been giving it a lot of thought, and I'm thinking that I'm going to sell him. And it's going to be really sad, but hopefully he'll take someone else to where they want to be. Lindsay will continue to ride, but she will compete with a new horse in a different type of riding. No, it'll be fine. And by the time we get home and tomorrow morning, she'll be off doing her other things and just thinking about the next thing that comes her way. In Harrisburg, one of the most difficult and intense rounds of horse show competition is about to begin. Do you have a course competition? Okay. The five horses and riders will be tested on a selection of skills. They are handed the course as they enter the ring and will have only seconds to memorize a series of complicated moves. Take the courses and look at the course. They can't do anything if they're looking at the course, right? Look at the paper when they're telling you. They all have their courses? Look at your paper when they're telling you the test. 
The announcer explains the course, and then they're on their own. Because there's no more coaching now. They're in the ring by themselves. They've heard the instructions. If they have any questions, they have to answer it amongst themselves now. The riders are asked to take their horses through several difficult moves, including trotting over a jump and changing gates between fences. The pressure is on Brian. All the other riders have put in solid rounds. To win this competition, she will have to put in a little extra to stand out. If Brian and Logan win here, they will have won three of the four equitation medals. That's only been done once before, and no one has ever won all four. But Brian has a clever strategy. She executes one move very differently from all the other riders. She slows Logan to a walk before she picks up the canter, demonstrating her originality and control of her horse in tight conditions. Hopefully, this will make her stand out. The final test is over. The top 10 riders, including the five from the final test, are asked to line up in the ring. Now, the order of ribbons will be decided. Frank and Stacia already know they have three in the top five, Maria, Sloan, and Brian. But there's a surprise. Chelsea has accomplished the remarkable. By placing in the ribbons here, her comeback from last week's disaster is complete. Or is it? Except there's six in here now. There's six and five. With Chelsea in the ring, there are now 11 riders instead of 10 waiting for ribbons. Eighth place honors here this afternoon, early evening. We congratulate And Stacia is starting to get suspicious. I'm sure you heard your number, right? She's the seventh place. Danville, California. She's supposed to be in the seventh place. Who told her coming in? California. Chelsea has pulled the ultimate horse show faux pas. Thinking she heard a number call, she entered the winner's circle by mistake. Wait, oh my God. Chelsea told you to come out here, right? Missy Clark, North Prime. No, but who told you to come out? For our sixth place right here. Clever move. Third. Clever move. It's all right. It's all right. You're all right. Well, she's blonde. We're going to chalk that up to a blonde moment. Maria and Amigo take fourth place on their farewell ride together. Good job, loser. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we are down to our final two. Only Brian and Sloan are left. The two best friends are also the two best riders. Now, let's see you guys later. It's official. Brian and Logan have won the Harrisburg Medal Final. She's now won three of the four national finals. You know, we're just so used to going to horse shows. But these finals are really, really special. I never thought she'd win a third final, and it was so exciting. I was crying, which I don't normally do. I couldn't believe it. If Brian wins the McClay Championship, she'll be the first person ever to win all four equitation medals. All eyes are now on her and Logan. 
In the meantime, there are no hard feelings between Brian and Sloan. To come back again this year, compete against 290 riders, and end up winning the class today, that's, I mean, the odds are stacked against you. So it's a big deal, it's a big deal. Next time on Horsepower, it's the moment everyone's been waiting for, the McClay Final. As two elite barns face off, there will be surprises, heartbreaks, and triumphs, but only one will win it all.